Thank you, Derek. And welcome. Welcome to the Golden Gate National Parks. I'm glad you're here. Um, Greg's going to talk about um, the Golden Gate National Parks Conservancy, our, our main corporate nonprofit partner, in a moment. And uh, I'll give you sort of a, an update on the park here and, and, and how it works and, and what we're up to. Uh, and I say welcome because uh, I, I feel like I'm fortunate to be welcomed back. I, I started my career, I was inspired enough to start my career here after college and, and uh, something drew me to this, this sort of uh, uh, place that, that was just getting started at that time. And uh, now after many, many years in the park service at various places and parks, I've, I've come back home and uh, was fortunate enough to be asked to step in after Brian passed away last year and uh, pinch it for a while and uh, carry on his legacy. And to that effect, I just want to mention to some of you younger members in the audience that Derek made a reference to Brian and Hookers. Well, <laughs> Hookers is uh, an acronym for uh, Heritage Conservation Recreation Service, so it's, uh, it's uh, not what you might think. But uh, Brian was an early pioneer in, uh, in recreation circles in the federal government. And uh, in fact, before the park was established in 1972, Brian was back. He actually, uh, because of his charisma and uh, uh, enthusiasm. He was actually asked to go to the White House and meet with President Nixon to talk about this idea of uh, a national park unit of some type in San Francisco and New York City. And that was Gateway and Golden Gate. And uh, Nixon was so wowed by Brian's presentation that he, he agreed to, to sign the legislation. And, and so Brian, before he came superintendent about 10 years later, was already kind of working it behind the scenes. So uh, the park. Golden Gate, at, at Golden Gate, we, we, we believe in bridges. I mean, we have uh, a world famous bridge uh, in the middle of our park. It connects our, our, our park lands north and south. It connects our, our constituents. It connects us with the business community. Um, it's, it's even our, the bridge is our logo for that matter. Um, a bit of context, this is really a park like no other, in my, in my opinion. Um, we have just lots of projects going on all the time. Uh, we have about 400 employees. Greg and I were comparing notes about that reference on numbers of employees. Greg does have a lot of employees, but I think we still have the edge. Uh, about 400 employees, federal employees. Uh, the park stretches about 80 miles uh, from north to south, to basically from Tomales Bay, almost Bodega Bay, down to Silicon Valley. Um, it's pretty amazing when you think about the price of real estate here and, and uh, the context of the that there's that much open space. Um, we're, kind of, we're fortunate, we're blessed to have all the ingredients that we have here. We have spectacular park sites, uh, geography, weather, and the Bay Area community. Um, but that does not guarantee success. Um, there are many opportunities in the Bay Area for people's time. There's competing interests for their time, treasure, and talent to get involved with. Um, but yet, we're fortunate to have a talented, uh, dedicated uh, group of, of staff and uh, a partner in uh, Greg and his, his conservancy team that, that have made, and citizens that have made this a priority in their lives to get this off the ground. Um, all these bridges lead to the public lands uh, where people from all over the world, every status, economic status, race, uh, nurture and strengthen their bodies and souls coming to the parks. Uh, when, you're, when you're working to save public lands, there are frequently people on opposite sides that need to be brought together. And you, you many of you park professionals know this story. Um, uh, dog walkers, the dog walking community, which is uh, uh, pretty striving in this area. Uh, equestrians, uh, mountain bikers, all these people are interested in using the parks. And uh, there's often conflicts when they try to use the same bit of trail or real estate at the same time. Um, we have seven million people in the Bay Area. And uh, as Derek mentioned, the, the second largest visitation uh, in the National Park Service, um, close to 15 million people. Obviously, a popular place. Some of our some of our uh, surveys have shown us that many of our visitors visit the park two to three times a week. So there's not always agreement, and, and I think our public, being very sophisticated and engaged, challenges us to do our best work. Challenges us to do more. They're not going to be satisfied with anything less. So here we try to build bridges or partnerships, as we would call them, every day. Um, our neighbors, um, Urban National Park has close neighbors. Uh, bridges not only bring community into the park, but they give us a pathway to their world, into that whole um, 
What is their interest? How are we relevant to them? How can we serve them better? Um, volunteering is a big part of our success here. Um, giving back to their community. Uh, we have almost 400,000 hours of volunteering uh, that goes on here each year. Um, about 10,000 people on our volunteer cadre. That's 7% of the entire National Park Service volunteer workforce. So we're really, again, fortunate to have that level of commitment, not only for the, for the product and the service they provide, but that, that sort of uh, unspoken uh, support that that's provided that is, is expressly volunteering. Um, the business community, obviously, uh, we have concessions, we have recreational partners, we have tourism partners, but they all sort of bring and serve the public that, that comes to these parks. And, and then finally, our nonprofit partners, uh, which are perhaps the most important. They help us financially, artistically, and educationally to support the parks. Um, Greg will speak about the conservancy in a moment, but but you know this is a partnership at, at another level. Um, I think uh, it's really uh, Derek mentioned the staffing. It's sort of a seamless uh, interface we have with conservancy and, and the federal staff on board um, because of the. Uh, the nimbleness that uh, the nonprofit uh, can bring, they're able to hire more quickly and, and hire uh, some of the best professional staff in the Bay Area to, to um, provide us uh, quality service and professional support. Um, obviously, philanthropy, um, the most successful nonprofit in the National Park Service, I would argue. Um, and then the quality of the work is, is really the gold standard, I think, for design. If you see Kavala Lodge here, and then the attention to detail, um, Christie Field, uh, and then more recently some other projects, Maury Point in the South, and Land's End in the Cliff House. Um, just excellent work, um, and again, raising it to another level. The Conservancy is also involved in a lot of programs, Alcatraz Island Operation, um, which augments our park staff. And it's a bit unusual to have a nonprofit doing the operational side, it's really a, a good partnership. Um, they run the gift shop, but they also uh, dispense the, the audiovisual, that's an audio tour actually. Um, it's, it's available in, in uh, seven different languages. And I think it's, it's uh, just been a tremendous success to, to uh, enable us to accommodate more visitors to the island, Actress Island, um, and because the demand is just incredible. Um, the other thing that I, I really have grown to appreciate in the seven or eight months that I've been here since I've come back is the, uh, the relationship with the community that the park and the conservancy have engendered. Um, you can have Cadillac facilities and, and trails, but unless people are using them and are supporting them, then it is somewhat moot. Um, when I was running the Centennial Program, we were really starting to focus on how we make that connection with, with communities. Again, there was going to be a lot of money for infrastructure for trails and improvements, but um, how do we connect with, with new audiences? And um, I was amazed when I came to Golden Gate, and they're pretty much doing that already. And, and obviously, we should be doing that in a, in a place like this, in a community like this. I was uh, recently with Greg, we, we went over to the first evening of the, um, at the Christie Field Center, which is an environmental aid center uh, that reaches out to inner city children. And um, the high school program is called IEL. Uh, it's young, uh, inspiring young emerging leaders. And uh, we did sort of the round robin, uh, get acquainted sort of exercise. Um, I had not met any of these people yet, and they were all high school age. And as we went around, it was clear that some of these kids were returning for their second, third year, and some were brand new that, that evening. And what came clear as, 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 as uh, we went around the room was that the the juniors and the seniors in the group were um, going to be, become mentors for the coming year for the freshmen and the sophomores. Um, and when you saw the quality of these, these individuals and you listened to their story and what drew, drew them there, one of them told me that that center was his second home. Um, they were very committed to helping their um, younger uh, colleagues and a non, uh, in a safe and non-threatening uh, environment away from the, the daily pressures of schools and all that that, that brings. 